a lot of people at Blackbird Air Park today. See a couple of big camera rigs. D21 drone. First day 12. Very old U2. And go pay an admission fee and wander around. I don't know what's going on here. But they're pretty cyber serious. I just love that they got the steering mechanism out. How the flight controls operate, that's just so perfect. The parachute comes out of a hatch at the top and the back there. So this is the one plane I've never really gotten to look at. And they did give... Is this new? Because it seems like it's in the best shape. Well, it's definitely been painted recently. Okay. And they were developing all the radar absorption paints and everything all that stuff is being developed in these days right i wonder if that weird looking metal color is uh titanium in, in this engine at the YouTube, but they made generations of them, right? Oh. And the early ones, the ones like Francis Gary Powers got shot down in, it was this guy right here. Oh. And <laughs> there is nothing in this airplane that doesn't need to be there. It is as light, those skins are as thin as they possibly can. And this thing flew to like 90, I think 75,000 feet is where Gary Powers said he got shot down because they wanted them at a certain altitude for the focal lengths of the cameras. This is an A12, so it's, it's different from an SR-71 and it's a little different back here, but that little compartment with the six latches, that's where this thing is just right up inside because it's a service point. There's a lot of servicing and checks that has to be done at that thing. Right. But generally it's, it's pretty near bulletproof. And, um, but then it's, it's hydraulically assisted. This aircraft, you, you couldn't, the thing goes Mach 3, you could not pull on the stick and make it go up. It would, it would feel like it was a brick wall to you. But this is the first one built of, of the, the entire line and there's, there's 50 Blackbirds and this is the first one and after all the flight tests and all the things that happened, the fact that this aircraft is still here, you know, they had a credit for, of the 50 they built in, in the family of aircraft, only 32 are still with us. That's kind of a high accident rate. But once they got them going, the SR-71, like the, the one that's behind us here, 17, uh, 973. That's, uh, that's one that actually flew the comedy. So one of the things they did figure out in the very beginning with this aircraft was the wing and the, the, dipsy, the dipsy doodle in the wing, the little dip down, you really see them in both of them, the angles, how the doors work. They began to develop the automation of what would happen when one, when one engine quit running. That's how they started them up with this thing and where those two handles are in that back deal. A shaft came up that had a gear in it there's two V8 motors inside here. It's, it's kind of a crazy idea, but it worked. And it spins the engine up to 3,000 RPM. And then they shoot this te uh, a fluid called TEB, tetroborane or something like that, that explodes when it gets to, to oxygen. So that's what lights the engines. That's what lights the fuel. And at 3,000 RPM, the fuel then is able to keep the engine spinning and it revs up to about 7,000 RPM for flight. 
and basically this great big long fuselage is mostly a fuel tank. And the A12 didn't have as much stuff in it as an SR71, which is right next to us. This is an SR71. So the fuselage is a little bit bigger from this point right here. The fuselage is a little bit longer than an A12. And this very original first A12, I'm, oh, I wish I could get up above and look down, see if it has the inertia navigation system on it. I wonder if it did. This is pretty amazing. Getting this close to one of these. Sitting outside in the sun. The, what looks like the plexiglass of the window up there, that's not plexiglass, that's quartz. It's pure quartz to deal with the heat. Oh. And do you see around the window there, that, that bizarre brown looking trim? Yeah. That's RTV silicone that was developed for the heat of all this stuff. And aviation completely uses that today. You see it all over the place in my garage. High heat, anything. It is the right thing to use. So the back of an SR-71, a little bit different from the A-12. Major fuel dumping situation. Prep for that. And yeah, you can get up on top of this. Wow, it's bring your car in to take a picture. And here's an A12. SR71. And this one has a removable nose, and I wonder if the A12, the A12, I don't think the A12 had a removable nose, I'm not really sure. This one certainly didn't. That nose is one piece. But this is the very first one made. I should get out of the way for all their photos and then maybe we'll... <laughs> this is a great shot in the back of that engine over there. SR71, side profile, A12, and here is a U. And wow, I wonder what this model was. It almost looks like this one had two people in there, but there's no way. Maybe it did. This is a D model, so two. Wow, it must be. I guess where that second person sits is probably cameras and stuff. This is probably just for flight training. So, so again, six six seven two one. We'll look up this one and see what it really did. Well, you can actually. It's kind of cute. It has this web search. Because they had a belly landing mishap in, at Cortez, Colorado. It's a miracle at Cortez. It's a U2D. And they are not very big from this angle. Oh, so they took out the camera and put a second crewman in. That's why this one doesn't have it. It's too, yeah. And was that done for training? Uh, while undergoing repairs. Supporting everything. It was in the development of a spaceborne missile warning system. Because this aircraft could fly very high. I wonder where that air duct goes that goes into the side of the engine like that. The last surviving U 2D model. So this, this, is, the this is the last D model? Uh, surviving U 2D model. Okay. <laughs> Could I just take a shot inside? Like, wow, it's pretty big in there. It's full size. Pretty big inside. She's quite big. Quite big. Nice looking seats. Nice looking door. Could you close the doors? That'd be really neat. Thanks. And we're like, you know, 
at Blackbird Air Park. It's a U-2 original one there. There's the very first A-12 right there. And on the other side is an SR-71. But right here, kind of a Cybertruck, of all things. Isn't that weird? It is not small, I gotta say. That is not small. It is a huge honking thing. Wow. This is pretty cool. This is no mounted in the nose of an airplane. And the radar. Whoa. They could wiggle from side to side. Here's an ejection seat in really good condition. I think it's good to go. And he said in that thing and press that button. Or pull that yellow handle. And this is a full pressure suit. You can always tell by the little by this little thing that holds the collar down. Everything's there. They're all, everything's designed to be yeah, yeah, used with gloves. I'm surprised, yeah. I'm surprised that's not bigger. Yeah, the, these are the last suits of the program. They were orange like that, and it's not. It's not that they colored them like that. Is the most natural of that type of fabric. What they're made of. That's the most natural. And look at all the expansion properties of it. Right, it's a pressure suit. It can inflate. And that looks like just a. Oh, and there's what the port. That's what you. That's what's inside. You always see them carrying these boxes. You always see them carrying these. Here, the, here it is up close. This is what's inside. Oh, and there's a picture of the new museum. Oh wow! Yeah. See, that's what it is. Because uh, they were testing it up to its wind tunnel model, model so they have a removal nose for like other stuff they want to add in because something's heavier or not. Wow! So this was 1960 and 1961, 19 early 1960s. It yes, would sir. be because because that plane over there flew in 1962, right? Yes. First flight. Yes, sir. Wow! Thank yep. you very much, sir. No problem. Have a good day. No problem. Yeah. Thank you.